bought this trailer used and uh, when I got it home I took the deck off it and put a nice coat of tractor implement paint on the thing after I wire brushed the whole frame so it's looking pretty good and here's the framing material I've got two by sixes for the floor joists and two by fours for the walls the trailer was 14 feet 8 inches long and I believe it was uh, less than 6 feet wide and so I extended the frame over the front and back and also on the sides so that I could have 8 feet wide cabin and uh, 16 feet long so that's the reason my floor joists are facing that direction in the front there so I could extend it over the tongue and there it is hanging off the back oh it hangs off about 16 inches hangs over this side then I took plywood and you can see it there and I screwed it to the bottom to seal that up I wanted a, a bottom on this whole trailer that's steel wool that plugs up the holes so the mice won't come in. Then I use the R19 insulation here. So we've got a nice insulated floor to the cabin. I found a door that I can use for the cabin. I have to build a frame for it. So there it is. There's the deck for the cabin. So I'm ready to build the walls. And I used a nice uh, tongue and groove plywood, three quarter inch plywood for the top here. And underneath it's got that marine grade plywood that's what I painted blue right there and the extensions you can see have to be painted yet so I think I've got a pretty good bottom for this cabin and next we'll build the walls I built the walls inside and we've had a stretch of really cold and snowy weather so I had the uh, trailer in the top of my barn there and so I built the walls in there and uh, now I'm bringing them outside this is a pretty heavy section right here, so I've got the tractor to bring that one out. I framed up the walls with uh, stud 16 inch on center, like a normal house construction would be. And uh, in the center section of the cabin, the ceiling will be a vaulted ceiling. With the cabin only being 8 feet wide, I thought it would make it appear like there's more space in there if I had a high ceiling. This section that I'm bringing out now is the back end of the cabin and you can see a board sticking up there and that's for the ridge board. It's just a temporary board that's sticking up that'll hold that ridge board while I get the rafters nailed in. And then when I'm all done I can take that board off. Uh, wrestle that thing off the forks of the tractor. These are little cleats I I temporarily screw on so when I stand up the wall it doesn't fall off the back of the uh, the cabin. So now we brought all the sections out. That center one there is uh, for windows and the one that I brought up last right there is going to be a little porch. A little porch in the entry way. I'll get everything just right and uh, nail in a few nails to hold the thing together just the way I want it. And then I can go back around with the air nailer and, and really put the nails on this thing. Here right now I'm getting ready to put the, the top plate on. We've got a double plate. There we go. That you can see. Now the 16 foot long 2x4 right there kind of warped while I was waiting in the last few weeks uh, to get things started so I had to use clamps to straighten up that 2x4 get it nailed down. So now we'll take the ridge board and, and stick that up in there. The ridge board is a 2x8 and the reason f that it's 2x8 is because my rafters are 2x6's and so you want the ridge board to be one size bigger. Now these, these end boards that are standing up that will hold the, the ridge board there, I have cut some slots in there so that I can stick one end up in and now I'm carrying the other end up the ladder there and I'll shove that up on the other board and it'll hold it there while I, while I get the rafters nailed up. So here we go, we're going to lift it up there and set it in that little notch that I've cut out. 
I used a 2x8 for the ridge beam rather than a 1x8 because the center section of the cabin, about 8 feet long, is that vaulted ceiling. And so I need a, a good sturdy uh, ridge beam to, to carry the weight of all these rafters, plus any snow load and so on. So I'm loading up these uh, rafters. I've got them uh, all cut out and they've been sitting around waiting for a nice day here to get things put together. So we'll take them out to the cabin and uh, start putting up rafters next. When I came up with my idea to build this cabin on wheels, I didn't realize that it's uh, actually a nationwide phenomenon right now. They call it the tiny house. And a lot of people are building these little tiny houses on wheels and they're actually living in them. All right, so my next step is to go around and mark where all the rafters are going to go. And they're 16 inch on center, just like the side walls are. So basically the rafters will uh, sit right on top of each one of those studs across there. So I like to mark things out and uh, it just makes it easier when I go to assemble the uh, rafters. So here we go, we're starting to put up a few of those. And they'll go up pretty fast. I've got them all cut out and they're all the same and the cabin's square so everything goes together pretty easily. I stick a few nails in by hand just to get the uh, rafters in place and then I'll go around with the air nailer and, and finish things off. The rafters that I'm putting up right now are in the center section of the cabin and this is where that vaulted ceiling is. There will be a high ceiling right there so you can see that ridge board will be uh, carrying all the weight of the rafters and any snow and so on. I live in snow country and so I wanted a, a pretty decent pitch on this roof. This is a 612 and that way the snow will slide off from the roof. I plan on putting a metal roof on the building. Today is April 13th and we've just finished a real cold snap here in western New York. And uh, finally that cold front has passed by and they're calling for sunshine and warmer temperatures. Uh, today was 45 degrees and they say uh, in the next few days we'll be getting up to the upper 60s and even 70 degrees. So that'll be good to get this cabin buttoned up and get the metal roof put on. Good morning. Well I've got the cabin pretty much framed up now and all the rafters are up. So things are looking pretty good. There's a shot of the inside framework and so the next step is to put the purlins on the roof and there they are running horizontally as they're one by fours and uh, the metal roof will screw to those. I've got this little insulation material here and it um, this is how it fits into the metal roof and that'll keep bugs and bees all kinds of uh, critters from from going up in there. So there I am peeling it off the, the paper that it comes on and, and you stick it on the edge of the roof and when you lay the tin down it uh, plugs those little holes in the, in the ends of the tin there. So here we are another new day and uh, we're getting started with things here and guess what? I've got my boys here today. My son and his friend they do a lot of construction work and they said, Dad, we'll come over and we'll put that other side on for you. And uh, they, they pretty much whipped it off in a couple hours. This um, material here prevents condensation inside the cabin. It's like a bubble wrap. And so right now they're, they're stapling that down. And then they'll go back and put the metal roof over the top of that. I always say that this roofing business is young man's trade. And these fellas took care of this in short order. The roof is finished. I've got another new day here. And I went down and got my material for the wall. This is uh, that quarter inch Luan. And I decided to put that on the inside of the cabin because it's very lightweight. And it looks pretty good when it's finished. People use that uh, on, for subfloor. 
uh, on top of their plywood. It's a nice smooth surface. For the outside of the building, I decided to go with this composite siding that I found. It's, a, it's about $19 a, a sheet, so it's pretty inexpensive. And it's also fairly light. I think it's about 3 eighths of an inch thick. It comes primed, and so uh, I figured this would be a pretty lightweight solution for the cabin. And... Uh, also, it will allow me to paint it whatever color I want when I'm done. I usually use nails to put the siding up, but because this is a, a mobile home here, I decided to use screws. I like to measure uh, on the panel so I have all the screws at the same uh, equal distance on each of the panels. That way, when they're all done, it looks pretty nice as far as the screws lining up. So here we are the following day. I uh, got to work on my little porch area. And so I wanted this little um, outside screen porch so that when I'm up in the woods where this thing's going to be and it happens to be buggy, I can uh, sit in my little porch. And it's about four feet square is all. But room for one chair in there, I'd say. And so here we are where... Um, cutting out for the window in the porch area and I'll make a little frame uh, to install the screen in here. The building is pretty square and that helps out a lot when you're putting up these large 4x8 sheet panels. When you come to the corner it's nice if it, if it comes out right and uh, in this case it, it looks pretty good. So tomorrow I'll get started on installing my screen door here in the front. Well, it's another nice day and I got the screen door installed as you can see. And now I'm finishing the siding on the front. And then I go around and put the trim work up so I can finish the soffits. So this is pretty much it for the outside of the tiny house. The soffits are all finished, front, sides, and the back. And I'll end this video here, but I'll uh, get to work on uh, the second video, which will show the inside of the cabin and what I'm going to do in there. So there's the old trailer that I bought, and that's what it's turned into. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, Tim Tools 99 Bye-bye.